story to tell. The AH-64 Apache has become a symbol of attack helicopters serving in the United States Army. It is a powerful strike platform with speeds up to 300 km per hour. But it was not the fastest attack helicopter, but belonged to a loser of the 1960s, a unique design from Lockheed Corporation, the AH-56 Trian, up to 400 km per hour, an incredible speed for a helicopter in its day, and even now. In the first half of the 1960s, the U.S. military began to realize the superior strike capabilities of helicopters. So they held a competition to build high-speed fire support helicopters for quick maneuvering on the battlefield. Several companies entered the competition and Lockheed's AH-56 trans as the star of the entire project. The AH-56 Strand was a perfect combination of a light helicopter and an attack aircraft. It was armed with powerful firepower, allowing it to escort large cargo helicopter to assist in ground attack and independent combat. The Strand which first flew on September 21, 1967. It was a quite complex design, even by modern standards, in a machine employing a variety of engineering solutions that have never been used before. The AH-56 was a dedicated two-seat attack helicopter. It was 16.66 meters long, 4.18 meters high, an empty weight of 5.5 tons, and a maximum takeoff weight of 11.74 tons. At the time of its birth, the AH-56 had a completely different and unique appearance compared to any previous aircraft. The two-seat cockpit was positioned tandem, with the pilot in the rear and the gunner in the forward position, featuring an advanced navigation and fire control squid. The pilot had a helmet-mounted sight system for aiming weapons. The Shans was one of the first aircraft to be fitted with an integrated avionics system consisting of a communications, navigation, and weapon squid. Lockheed's helicopter was slender in shape and highly contoured to bring out the most aerodynamic qualities of the design. Shan had a top rigid main rotor, low mounted wings, and a tail rotor, but it also added a pusher propeller. This gave it a respectable speed. The engine was fitted behind the cockpit and fed by small intakes to either side of the main rotor mast and the single XR system facing aft. Weapon turrets were mounted at the nose and the middle of aircraft under belly. It could mount either a 40mm granite launcher or a 7.62mm minigun. The belly turret included a 30mm automatic cannon with 360 degrees of rotation. Six external hard points were located along the bottom of the helicopter, with two under each wing and two on the fuselage under the sponsons. The two inner wing hard points could carry parts of three BGM-71 tow anti-tank missiles. 70mm rockets in 7 rocket or 19 rocket launchers could be carried on the four wing hard points. The two fuselage mouths 
were dedicated to carrying external fuel tanks. The wing hard parts were also plumbed to allow the carriage to serve additional fuel tanks if required. Shan was powered by a General Electric T64 propeller shaft model, producing 3925 horsepower. AH-56 could reach a top speed of 400 km per hour, cruise speed of 361 km per hour, range of 1969 km. Service ceiling was 6100 meters and rate of climb was 15 meters per second. At high speeds, the amount of lift provided by the wings along with thrust from the pusher prop reduced the aerodynamic loading of the rotor. In 1966, the U.S. Army awarded Lockheed a contract for 10 AH-56 prototypes, but they also ordered the less complicated bear AH-1G Cobra due to the urgent demands of the Vietnam War. However, there have been problems with the fabrication of test prototypes. A further crash and technical problems affecting performance put Shan development behind schedule, resulting in the cancellation of the production contract on May 19, 1969. As American involvement in Vietnam was quieting down, the Army cancelled the Shan program on August 9, 1972. By this time, the AH-1 Cobra was quietly deployed by the Army during the Vietnam War and equipped with a tow anti-tank missile. Another problem with the AH-56 was its expensive cost, which amounted to millions of dollars, while the US was spending a lot of money on the Vietnam War. So when Bell came out with Cobra at a significantly cheaper cost, the AH-56 lost its advantage. On the other hand, the US Army also looked at the commonality. They already had the Huey, and Cobra was basically an upgrade of Huey. So the parts were interchangeable. That was probably the biggest factor that killed Shan. To this day, the idea of high-speed helicopters begins to gain attention, and some of them have been inspired by the AH-56 unique rotor designs and perfected it. Although the Shan program never found its place in Army aviation, the program was not necessarily a failure. It was simply born at the wrong time. My video of AH-56 Shan answer. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos.